on a personal note. And which is this, that speaking on this subject a sadness inevitably comes over one. Sadness, sorrow, because one is out here in Delhi. If I were somewhere closer to where the terrorists are, perhaps it would not be sorrow or sadness. Right in the field of action, perhaps anger comes up. But since one is not there, perhaps it's very easy to say that one has only sorrow or sadness. And those who are outside that perhaps can see at a distance that this is the lot of people who have to suffer. The lot of people who through sorrow or suffering gradually grow or recover their soul. A soul is recovered in the process of meditation of one what one has undergone. And this process, I think, it is our suffering here, the personal suffering of one community. But in the process you also see the suffering we share with the other communities also have suffered throughout history. Not long ago, there was this last war, or those who were still young but will probably remember. What had happened to communities, community after community, either wiped out, become non-existent, or its members scattered all over the globe. Now, this is what I mean by suffering, because from only personal suffering which we share, we have of our own, then it becomes a kind of union which the note to the preamble to this conference has said, this fraternity that we must develop. In our, in our own case, in the, way, the case of those who know Kashmir from the inside, not only as a physical entity, those who know who have shared in it as some moments of this particular kind of, what I would say, not without, not trying to idealize it, a Devik Shakti in it, which is certainly there in the very atmosphere of this land, which is all, all, the whole earth is also, has that, certainly I think so. But what you see, these demonic powers also, which are a part of our human nature, and also angelic powers, powers of angels, and godlike beings also there, this you see manifested, or it had manifested in the valley, I think, in a very partial way. It was partial that there was so much of it there. And I think this is to me another source of great sorrow, when you look at it personally, that anything that you have got good in you, anything which you say you can be a little bit not proud of it, but be happy about it, then they say the source is there. The source is there because this was something unaggressive, mellow, and really humanized whether it articulated itself or not. This inner nature, I do not want to go to political factors or historical factors, but constantly if you think about people who have mentioned about, right from Abhinav Gupta and others, these are not only scholars, but they have felt something in very existence. They were in touch with something which you, certain moments, in your best moments you are able to do that, and they try to preserve that by their interpretations of it. Now what I want to say is, that if we are talking about, as Kashmiris, or then, there is, those of who are outside Kashmir, but those who also have lived inside it, can see how it is faced with the, it's not physical survival, but it's also the survival of this very spirit which is a stake, and it has not to do with the factors of fanaticism, one kind or another. It has to do with the kind of some other culture, which is worldwide today, global culture, one kind perhaps to call it culture would be 
uh, quite erroneous, which is changing the face, not the dress of people, or Kashmiris, outward grab, not the speech. All these things probably change, not the way one lives, the houses, the utensils you use, all these things are there, but I mean transformation from very deep within. Therefore, what will happen can happen is that we remain Kashmiris in name only, but inside that thing is gone. I think it is very important or it, that we remember that. Without that, I think it's unrealistic to expect that the children will grow, grow here later on, or even, as I say, grow anywhere today. They would be anything but Kashmiris. I mean, there'll be only Kashmiris in name. Now, when one talks about this, one really means this, that the essence of his particular culture, the essence which was created, not purely intelligence, but soul, that is the expression, perhaps people don't use it anymore. This soul that you have, that particular thing, must be maintained at any cost, at any under threat. Is the threat of media, the world media that it is, which is a kind of entertainment. But to remember it constantly, it's a kind of prayer, I think. The prayer is necessary to maintain yourself in your own solitude when there is a solitude and not lost in a crowd. Kashmiri Pandits particularly is a community known for as, I do not want to talk uh, as a detriment of other communities, intelligence. It cannot be made into a mass or a mob and it must, must function at the highest level of intelligence. And for that, intelligence is not cunning, but it is being in touch with the very soul in which, you, the soil in which you have been born like that. I think this is, without this remembrance constantly, and how does one remember this? One can only remember this by not a routine prayer, but I think distinctly, you say Saraswati, Saraswati is the goddess, you say, only given to the name, a form, a form of the very the divinity of nature. The divinity is most benign, most uplifting form. If we can recreate that, our painters, our artists, and I think Kashmir had that. It's unfortunate that the great workmen that you have in Kashmir, their voice is also choked, who create the great, you see the craft like this. That is one form of it. And then you have the painters, the writers, the musicians and so on. They are only an expression of this particular power that which is within us like this. And you have to nurse it, to nurture it, and to respect it. That is what is sacred. When one has this sense of sacred, the uplifting force, then you know Kashmir, what we mean by Kashmir is this, and I will try to explain that, will remain. It will not die. Because this is the deepest source which is sort of make us remember that the distinction that you are thinking about is that you have to lift yourself up to that. It is not there in us all the time. It must be brought back constantly. And this renewal through memory, through loving images that there are, these loving images must be nursed. This is not hatred, this is love. And love is a greater force than hatred of any kind. And I think we can nurse this, this love through these images, through the power of our imagination then I think no power on earth can really sort of destroy that. Even if there's one man remains from the valley who like, I think this will again proliferate, will come out. This is what happened to communities which have suffered like this, but who have maintained the reserve, the restraint, and the power to remember. Somebody spoke about a Jewish community, and I'm not, to do not idolize them again, but you can see that this community but constantly it remembered that. There, there is a very long history also. And, but, and you say this is again also another kind of intellectual community. And I do not mean this as, as a praise, but by force of events, by force of sheer numbers, you can destroy physical body like this, but you cannot destroy the mind finally. Because that is much harder, it cannot be destroyed. So I think, I hope that this is what we must remember and do not, after we leave this conference, forget us. This must be constantly in our mind, not as an obsession, but as a love.